Welcome back to Workshop Friend. Last video I covered the transportation of my Colchester student lathe from Pakistan and bringing it over to the UK. Well in this video I want to continue with that and the process I've gone through to get it ready to use. So the first niggling little problem that I had was, I, was a slight oil leak here in the gearbox and I finally tracked it down to the drain plugs. They have um, fibre washers in them and I guess they must have gone hard over the years. So I replaced those with O-rings and that seems to have cured that problem. I took the cover off actually because I thought that it was a gasket. It wasn't. Uh, that also gave me an opportunity to just adjust the gating mechanism here for the, um, for the gear change. And this last position, it just wasn't quite engaging and needed a slight adjustment. The oil I had in the headstock was actually a slightly higher viscosity than recommended. Uh, because that was what was available to me in Pakistan. Uh, in actual fact, it was fine there because I was working in a very hot climate. Uh, the average temperature in my workshop was probably 15 to 20 degrees higher than it is here. So I drained the oil out of that and that oil has gone to the gearbox, which is a suitable viscosity, and I've replaced the headstock with SAE32 oil. The second small job, which I've been putting off for ages, and now is an opportunity to sort out, is the chuck key for my three-jaw chuck. Somewhere along the line, I suspect a student or a young apprentice had left the chuck key in the chuck, and it had snapped the end off. And it had been rather poorly welded on, and it wasn't square. So I decided to cut that off. I popped this in the lane, of course it was too hard. So I heated it up to red heat, annealed it, let it cool slowly, and then I was able to machine this down. There's enough material there to put four new flats on in the milling machine. Now I'm going to reharden it, but I'll wait for another job, which needs to be heat treated, and do the two together. Now I've always had one of these missing. Again, I suspect it was an overzealous apprentice who tried to over tighten one. So um, I thought well, this is an opportunity to make a new one. So I've taken this out as a pattern and I've got some silver steel in the other lathe and I'm going to machine a new one. So I'll take you over to that and uh, go through that process with you. So I've started to rough out the silver steel or drill rod and I'm going to try do and do all the turning operations or most of them in the one setting. So this has got to be brought to this diameter. I've got to bring this down to the right diameter for the UNC thread and this spigot on the end. So I can do all of those in one setting and then we'll take it over to the milling machine for cutting the flats. I don't have a threading gearbox on my simple MIFA lathe, but it's relatively quick to change the gears around and I'm now cutting a scratch pass for a 14 TPI thread. Silver steel is relatively hard and this is a relatively coarse thread. So initially I could take fairly deep cuts, but uh, as time went on the cuts got shallower and shallower until uh, I was having to take several spring passes, but eventually I got to an adequate thread depth.
The reason I'm stopping short of the end of the thread and finishing by hand is because I don't have an undercut which I wanted to avoid. I wanted to bring the thread to a definite finish point as per the original and using a high speed steel tool on civil steel it's very easy to break the tip so this way I avoided that. I think we can finish this off now with the die. So even though I've thread cut to almost the full depth, I'm still using a bit of tailstock support with the die holder just to get the thread started. And then once I'm confident it's square, I can finish off without. So with the work now in my dividing head, I'm just touching off on the outside diameter and I know the across flats dimension. So uh, subtracting the feeder gauge and the material to be removed, I can uh, determine the depth of cut. Well, it's two and a half thou <coughs> over, so what I'm going to do is just raise the table slightly and take one more cut all the way around. I'll sit bang on. If I had collets, now is the time that I would have used them. But instead, I'm using my self centering four jaw chuck to very lightly grip on the threads to complete the final operation just to face the head of the bolt. So here's the completed bolt. Uh, I've deburred it and it's ready for hardening and tempering. And here's the original which I copied it from. So at the same time, I'm going to harden and temper the, the chuck key. And from a previous video, a boring tool holder which I made. So I thought I would do all three together while I'm getting the equipment out and uh, heating things up. It's quicker to do all three at the same time. I'll put the biggest one at the back, the one that takes the most heating, so that can be picking up residual heat while I'm heating up the other two.
Okay, I've uh, cleaned up the surfaces as you can see so that we can see the oxide layer when we temper them. So I'm just going to temper them one at a time. We don't need all that surround now because we don't need so much heat on there. So I'm going to go gently and uh, I'm going to aim for a uniform tempering, certainly on the bolt. Looks like a very pale straw to me at the moment. Okay, yeah, it's coming now. There we go. Yep, the bolt, the thread end is fine. Just this end now. I think we'll go with that. Okay, that's one. So here's the finished bolt. It's turned out a nice even blue temper. So I may do without this for a long time. It would be nice to have a full complement so I can use all four stations of the tool holder. Here's the chuck key. Again, I was able to get a nice even temper on that. I haven't been able to sort this out. I need to fix the Tommy bar somehow, but that's a job for later. So that's another job out of the way. And finally, although unrelated to this job, the, the mini boring tool holder, um, not quite such an even temper on that, uh, but I think that's okay. Well, the lathe sits on the floor at six points and uh, my floor is not very good it's not very level and I'm not sure how stable it is either but I have um, two hardwood chocks one here and one at the tailstock and at the rear and I use those two to level the lathe basically in the longitudinal sense and then um, we have an inbuilt jack in here, um, homemade jack here, homemade jack here, and then opposite this on the other side we have another inbuilt jack. So we have six points and four of those are jackable and that's what I use to level the lathe. I'll just zoom in a little so you can see a bit closer. The, so here's one of the hardwood chocks at the rear Here's one of the homemade jacks, and then another homemade jack, and then the inbuilt jack in the machine, and then down the back here, if I get the light on it, you'll see right down the back there, so you can just see at the bottom there, at the right at the back, the other inbuilt jack. So the problem is getting to that one. So to get around that problem, I made this long handled, what can you call it, box spanner, I guess. I found this uh, wrench, looks like a uh, services mains wrench or something like that. And uh, a very old piece of steel, quite tough and difficult to actually cut. And I found this box spanner, but it wasn't quite the right size. So I made this little tapered drift here and um, so I just milled it up in the minnow machine. It's got sort of a lead in there, heated this up and then forced it over the end there and that gave me the right size. So that 
save me buying a box spanner and uh, for the time being this is just wedged on there but I'll probably pin it on uh, if I had welding gear I'd weld it so I'll show it in use so the box spanner can be reached over the top of the lathe and it just sits there like that so while I'm leveling I can get to all six points now of course the one in the corner here I don't need to get to because uh, that's fixed and then uh, I can very conveniently jack the machine and check with the level so we'll take a closer look at the leveling so I'm just leveling the middle portion of the bed at the moment yep that's level we'll come up to the headstock in this is going to be lowered touch more okay we'll come back check this again yep that's fine and now we'll move to tail stock so we'll level here we'll level here and we'll come down to the tailstock now and great we'll level there too as well so I have been able to to level it now what, what I find is that uh, you can't sort of think to yourself well I'll level the headstock and then that will be finalized and then I'll move on to the middle portion and that will be finalized and then I'll go to the tailstock no it doesn't work like that you have to sort of iterate around so uh, whatever you do at any point seems to affect <laughs> everywhere else as well so with a bit of patience you can finally get um, all three points level